career on the CTY, my presentation, Upside Jane Wayne, and how she had the greatest impact on the printmaking process of lithography in American history, as she was able to revive the performing art form, not only through her own art, but through her aspiration to create a space to further the creation of lithography, was she able to create a space that fueled the production of lithography artworks in America. To start out, I'm going to look at the history of women in printmaking. And printmaking had long been a male-dominated art form. It hadn't always even been considered an art form. Until the 17th century, it used to be considered a secondary art form because it was mainly used for the reproduction of imagery, not creating new imagery. Um, printmaking was an art form that required collaboration. Men were seen as the support in the printing studio, the ones who would pull the work being made. The woman's role was seen as secondary, and it's often why they have been forgotten in our history, in the history of printmaking, especially as it wasn't always considered an art form and the gender roles of the time were also a restriction. Um, women were tied to the household. Um, Mary Cassatt is often seen as having a large role in the history of women in printmaking. She's often looked at as a leading woman figure in printmaking. And although she played a role in the history, she, not to deny a her, of her important role in the history of printmaking, but there were also women that came before her, and there were women who came after her who have also played key roles in creating the history of printmaking. One of the women that played a key role in the history of printmaking in America was June Wayne. June Wayne was born in Chicago in 1918. She was an only child raised by her mom and her grandmother. Despite dropping out of high school, June found success at an early age. She had her first solo exhibition at the age of 17. She was able to take part in the growing literary and scientific scene that was happening in, Hyde, in the Hyde Park area. She was able to work with writers around the University of Chicago. She participated in the Works Progress Administration, which got her a lot of insight into large-scale art projects, and in the 30s and the 40s, she continued to explore new art forms, such as jewelry design, production illustration, radio script. She also lobbied for the Artists' Union in Washington, D.C., and she would later marry her husband, George Wayne. When, and they would have a daughter named Robin Claire. After the birth of their daughter, they would permanently move to Los Angeles, which, where Wayne would become um, a key member in the growing art scene in LA, where, and she would be honored with an exhibition. Following her move to LA in 1948, Wayne continued to explore new mediums, one of those being lithography. Wayne started to use lithography as a way to express new imagery that she was working with in her art. Um, at this time, there were very few lithography studios in America. One of the only ones was right in LA, and it was the studio of Winston Kistler and Wayne began to work with him. In my research, I came across an article that looked at women in printmaking that had benefited from working with men, and it had cited Kistler as having been beneficial to Wayne's career in lithography. In reality, the work that June was making wasn't what she wanted to be making. She had to adapt to Kistler's various different needs and tastes just to keep making lithographs. She also had to adapt to his skin allergy. 
and she, as she continued to work with him, he would give her continuous negative feedback, which further pushed her away from his studio. After the continuous negative feedback she was receiving from Kistler, she departed from his studio. She had seen a print that was pulled by Marcel Dereger, who was working in France, and she wanted to work with him after seeing his work. Um, she realized she had been traveling to France, and before her second trip to France, she realized that it was a long way to go to make a lithograph, and she began to look for alternatives. She also had had issues while working with Marcel, an article called their relationship dramatic and confrontational. She had to convince him that she was worth his time, um, but she was also able to make work that she was interested in while working with him. She didn't have to adapt to his weird um, like quirks like Kistler had. Um, ultimately, she thought it would be best to find a place to continue working in America. And after returning to America, she was noticing the lack of printing studios and the lack of lithography that was present in America at the time. After returning to America and noticing the lack of printing studios and the lack of lithography, June began to make a plan to revive lithography in America, training master printers to work with American artists. Wayne's gifts as an artist, a writer, and an organizer all came together and she received funding from the Ford Foundation's program in the Humanity and the Arts to fund her idea. Tamarind was focused on bettering the medium long-term in America to create more works and increase the amount shown to the public. She wanted American artists to have access and experience that was equal to what she had experienced in Europe, one article calling it an American Renaissance. Tamarind aimed to benefit lithography as a whole, not just Tamarind Master Printers. It granted fellowships so artists could train and print and learn that medium. It also led those artists to continue working with the medium and gain that experience that they needed to go on and open their own studios across America, further spreading lithography across the country. Despite being an activist for an art form, she was very prominently making lithographs herself. June's work in lithography ranged in a variety of topics throughout her career. In her earlier work, she was looking at tunnels and caverns. This is the imagery that led her to lithography in the first place as a way to depict this imagery. She was also creating narrative works and optical illusions. Her work she says, aimed to debunk the stereotypes of artists as inchoate, intuitive, and emotional romantic. Later in her life, after founding Tamarind in 1960, during the 70s, she had been very persuaded by science in her work, but was also she was also able to create and express affection in her work, which many of her pieces can attest to. In works capturing the loss of friends and family, or her series, that made tribute to her mother, which an example of that series is the image on the right. Um, in this series, it took an, um, objects from her mother's life and put them into the prints. She created a large body of work and it's no surprise that she wanted to make sure of the continued use of this medium in America and create a better environment for it. In conclusion, Wayne's passion and advocacy for lithography pushed her to better the use and legacy of the medium in America, as it had been dying as it had been dying out due to the lack of studio spaces and printing spaces in America. Wayne had an idea for a program to involve more people in lithography, and through her program, printers went on to open their own studios, furthering the studio space for lithography in America. Her concern and interest in the medium forever changed its history in America. Thank you.